Welcome to Zion Dew once again this Tuesday morning. My name is Edna Odongo and it is my pleasure to share with you the word of God this morning. So I want us to just pick up from what we were talking about last Tuesday, seeking God's righteousness. So we'll be talking about the righteousness of God a little deeper. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 Say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So the Bible tells us to seek the, king, the, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We are supposed to seek God's righteousness. And we talked about how God's righteousness is imputed to us. God's righteousness is credited unto us. God's righteousness is put as a covering over us. And it's not to do with our works. It's nothing to do with us. It's everything to do with God, who God is. We talked about how the righteousness of God is superior. It's, you know, it's who God is, and he makes that to be a part of our lives. So um, I want to read uh, f Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. It says, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus here was talking about a righteousness that needs to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. And I asked myself, you know, what is the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? If, 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 you, if, you, if you know about the scribes and Pharisees in scripture, they, they are the, the kind of people who focus so much on outward appearance, external things, the works, you know, you have to do things in order to be good in order to be considered a good person, in order to be considered acceptable before God. So their righteousness was based on works. The, there's a time that Jesus was talking to them and telling them how they focus so much on cleaning the outside of the vessel, the outside of the cup, and they don't clean the inside. So their focus was mostly on externals. So the, the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees is a righteousness that is based on works. But you see, that is a righteousness that cannot take us before God. It is a righteousness that is not enough. It does not qualify us before God because it's based on our works. And yet, we have the fallen nature in us. So Jesus was telling them, if your righteousness does not exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Meaning that in the kingdom of God, there's a righteousness that is superior. There's a righteousness that is required, that is better, that has more value, that is acceptable before God. That is the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus. What is wrong with our righteousness? What is wrong with us, you know, claiming our own righteousness or the righteousness that is based on our, on our works? Because the Bible also tells us that we should do good works, isn't it? Uh, the Bible says that Jesus went about doing good works. So we are supposed to do good works. Yet those works are not what makes us acceptable before God. Our righteousness is based on our works or our deeds. So it is dependent on us. It is a righteousness that has a lower value because it depends on us and yet we have the fallen nature, you know, the, 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 the fallen nature in us. So it is not enough for us to have the, you know, our own righteousness. Our righteousness does not procure to, true salvation. It does, not, it does not give us salvation. It does not give us eternal life because, again, it is not acceptable before God. It only makes us feel good or feel better than others. You ever heard of that uh, phrase that says um, holier than thou? You know, having a holier than thou attitude? Like you're, you're, you're confident in yourself. You know, confident in what you have done. Confident in the fact that you do this and this and that for God. You're better than others. That is not, you know, that is not the kind of righteousness that we are talking about. So our righteousness has no worth, has no value in the sight of God. In Isaiah 64 verse 6, it says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. It says all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Actually puts it in plural. Our righteousnesses, whatever it is that we would want to bring before God as our righteousness, whatever kind of thing we would try to bring before God, it is simply as filthy rags. It does not stand 
before the righteousness of God. It doesn't stand before the standard that God has for us. So we need a righteousness that is superior, just like Jesus says. God's righteousness, it what becomes our breastplate in, as the arm of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, put on the, armor, uh, the, the breastplate of righteousness as part of your armor. So the righteousness of God becomes like an armor for us. It becomes like a protection for us. It is a kind of righteousness that the enemy cannot fight against. It is a righteousness that is superior in value. It, 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 it is able to procure salvation for us because it makes us become acceptable before God. It is the standard that God would require. The enemy cannot fight against this righteousness. That is why it becomes part of our, our breastplate. It makes us presentable before God. So we are told to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we seek the righteousness of God because it has value. It, it is superior. It has superior righteousness. And it because the righteousness that has the power to protect us. It's something the enemy cannot come against. He cannot fight that level of righteousness. He can deal with the righteousness that is based on works. But he cannot deal with God's own righteousness because it is superior. So I encourage you, seek the righteousness of God. This is a righteousness that comes by faith. It comes by trusting in the Lord and not trusting in yourself. It becomes by being in Christ, being found in Christ, not having your own righteousness, but having the righteousness that comes by faith. So I encourage you to be in the Lord, be in Christ. Walk by faith. That is the standard that will that, 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 God, that is acceptable before God. A righteousness that comes by faith. A righteousness that is in Christ Jesus. That is the standard that God requires of us. So I encourage you this morning, seek ye the righteousness of God in everything that you do. Don't, don't rely on your own works. Do not rely on your own ability. Rely on the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for a new day this morning. We thank you, Jehovah God, because you have given us a righteousness that is superior, O oh God, and you have asked us, actually you have commanded us to seek that righteousness. I thank you because it is a righteousness that is superior, that is, that is able to protect us, that the enemy cannot come against, O oh Lord. Father, that is the righteousness that we desire to have in our lives, O oh God. Father, help us to seek this righteousness, even in our daily lives. As we begin this new day, I thank you for each and every person who is listening to me today. Lord, I pray your blessing upon their lives today. I pray that, oh God, you increase in them, oh Lord. And the ones who do not know you, Lord, I pray that you reveal yourself to them this morning. Reveal to them, oh God, this righteousness, oh God, that is superior. That they may come to you, oh Lord. That they may come to rely on you in the name of Jesus. That they may come to be found in Christ, O oh King of glory. May you touch their hearts. May you reveal yourself to them. I thank you and I give you praise in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a good day.